You're listening to audio from the Village Church, a community that's formed by the gospel and sent on God's mission, gathering weekly in the heart of downtown Hamilton, Ohio. For more information about the Village or to connect with us, you can find us online at myvillagechurch.com. Welcome to an episode of the Formed and Said Podcast, a podcast by and for the Village Church that gathers in downtown Hamilton, Ohio. Uh, we've got three of the four elders here today. Uh, hey, yo! Name... What's oh. up? Hey, there's a group. Uh, my name is Scott O'Donohue. With me mm, is... Michael Graham. And Matt Tucker. Thanks for being here today, Thanks gentlemen. Thanks um, So today we are uh, talking about... Uh, the church, um, kind of a lead up to a family meeting that we have scheduled in March of 2023, March 19th, um, doing things a little bit differently uh, this time. Um, either one of you want to talk about why we're doing this thing before we actually have the family meeting? Or? I'll just say uh, we, to give people space to process stuff, family meetings often feel like we get together for an hour after gathering and just say things really quickly. Um, throw a lot of stuff at people, don't really have much space to respond. And while we do make ourselves available in subsequent weeks, um, it doesn't always play out that way. So similarly, I think to the way that we have shifted Village Gate stuff, it's like, hey, let's give all the information on the front end, give people space to respond and um, consider and and reflect a bit. And then uh, when we come together for the family meeting, we actually get to interact a bit around it rather than just spew stats and figures and all that stuff so it's good it's the old uh the ancient adage of uh this meeting could have been an email um, <laughs> yes you know that kind of thing it's like ah yeah we or, dump or a lot of info or a podcast <clears throat> and so um yeah and the one thing that we get to do that's kind of unique when we make everyone stay after <laughs> is like yeah we get to interact and when a lot of that is just just kind of one way of giving information it feels like oh we're probably not making the most of that unique space together so yeah hopefully on march 19th we get get to interact a little bit more with those who stick around. So uh, again, that is March 19th after the gathering. If you're listening to this prior, um, yeah, members uh, expect you to be there, but everyone else who is listening to this or doesn't, but hears about it, uh, welcome to attend and be a part of that uh, as well. So uh, yeah, I mean, for those of you who have been to a family meeting before, we're going to talk about largely a lot of the things that you hear us talk about. We'll look at numbers and stuff and finance things and uh, just kind of what the rest of the year looks like, some updates, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then as you're listening, feel free to jot down questions. Uh, you can send them to us in advance of the family meeting, or you can simply raise your hand and we'll pass the mic and let folks ask stuff uh, in front of everyone else um, on March 19th. So that said, uh, just hop into some numbers. We always kind of start off with looking at uh, just who we are, what, who's like coming around on Sundays, all that stuff. And numbers are not the thing. We're not driven by uh, metrics as a church, but as much as like each number represents a real person, we do care uh, about what that looks like and how we're doing or whatever. And so just snapshot of the village, which honestly is like really encouraging when we're looking at even just our Sunday morning gatherings um, is we are for, uh, for the first time we are, we've actually surpassed where we were pre covid um, so like in 2020, looking at the first eight weeks of the year for the last few years, going back to 2020, um, that year we had 188, uh, folks gathering with us in total on, uh, like on a Sunday morning, um, in 2021, that was, that dropped down to 122 and then went back up to 172, uh, last year. And then this year, um, we're, we're up to 218. And so we've not just kind of come back to where we were pre COVID, but we've surpassed that as well. Same thing is true for Kayville. Um, we have 63 kids on average uh, back in those classes on a Sunday morning, which is sweet. Uh, it was 55, like right before COVID hit, and then it dropped to like 16 the next year, and then 42 the year after that, and then again, now back up to 63, which is cool. Um, yeah, so really sweet. Um, any other numbers or stuff there for you guys? You know, the youth is growing and stuff like that. I don't know the yep. exact numbers, but it's really encouraging to see a bunch of kids connecting with that and yep. that space growing over time as well. So yeah, there's tons to be excited about. Yeah, I don't have specific bridge numbers, but they do yep. continue to grow. And like for the first year this year, they're getting to go on like a summer camp awesome. um, and all that stuff, which is really sweet. And so just all around the yep. village, like, yeah, COVID, I don't know that like we, there was maybe a little attrition here and there from folks, but we also grew like during COVID as well. But like to see that reflected then on Sunday mornings for folks to... 
to keep coming back, continue coming back, and new folks to gather with us is just really sweet. And so, like, there's life and flourishing and things happening uh, all across the board, you know, kids and adults. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, membership stuff as well. Um, we we just had a Village Gate class. Uh, 11 folks showed up, which was really fun. Um, we had... Uh, we have 134 active members, which is probably the same thing maybe that we reported at the last family meeting, but that's because we haven't had another round since then, and uh, we're still waiting to hear back from the folks that just like just had the class on Sunday to see if they want to uh, actually pursue membership. So uh, all that said, we could have a potential of 145 active members um, at the village here uh, in the next week or two, um, and this this month we're recording this. February, what is today? 23rd? Is that right? 23rd, yeah. yeah, February 23rd. So we're recording this a couple weeks in advance of when we'll sit down for the family meeting. But um, but this month, February, uh, has been our first Connect month. It's kind of been a new rhythm for uh, the village. And so we've had like an I'm new here huddle, like the first Sunday uh, baptism basis class. The second Sunday we had Village Gate. Uh, the third Sunday, and then this coming Sunday, we're going to celebrate baptisms, which is fun. And so, um, just so you guys know, like we've had, we had uh, four folks stick around for the I'm New Here huddle that first Sunday. Um, we had eight people come to Baptism Basics, and, and we're going to be baptizing six folks this Sunday, which is pretty sweet. And like I said, we had 11 folks stick around for Village Gate. And so, um, we'll like, you know, that's stuff to celebrate, and we'll keep tabs on like, ah, three times a year doing that Connect Month stuff. Like, does that seem like a good rhythm, healthy, whatever? Um, but yeah, just want to let you guys know there's folks showing up to that stuff. And I think at least for February of 2023, it's been helpful to help, you know, people connect to the church. So um, any other stuff from you guys before we move into money things? I don't think so. It's just good to have healthy rhythms like that. Yeah. Definitely. It's really challenging with everything going on to provide space for people to connect in those ways. And it's easy to overlook that stuff. And we really care about it. And as we do grow, it's really important to make sure people know what's going on and who we are. And so... Yep. Scott, you said it well, but it's just a great opportunity to put a rhythm into place that's healthy. Yeah, that's great. Cool. Uh, well, Matt, do you want to talk about... Uh, it's Everyone's always... It's their favorite part of the whole gathering is the finances. And so um, you want to chat about some money stuff? I'd love quick? to talk about some stuff. Um, met with the finance team this last Sunday, and these are some of the things that they wanted to highlight as well. And so um, just a brief overview of the last two or three years in 2021... Um, it wasn't as great of a year financially, and we had to kind of finish with a finish well campaign just to get us up to making budget. And we're grateful for that generosity there and, and the money that came in, and we know God provided in that. Um, in 2022, it was a very different year. It went way better than we thought in regards to you know generosity and, and money coming in and provision there. Um, we actually ended the year 81 thousand dollars over what we projected which was a, a wonderful blessing and I do want to talk about what we're doing with that because that's as a chunk of money and we want to be good stewards of that and so um, I'll hit on some high points with this and we will break some of this stuff down in maybe another segment of this podcast but we do want to be generous we gave away 10 percent of all those dollars at the end of last year 2022 we ended with four hundred twenty eight thousand dollars that God brought in through your generosity and that, that blew our minds, honestly. Like, we didn't expect that, and we were really grateful. And so we did put some more into generosity stuff at the end of the year, which we will talk about in a little bit. But we gave away $42,000 total with all that, which is a blessing. Um, we were able to also invest back into this space this year, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But that's something we want to intentionally do is not just have something in bigger accounts, but also to be able to make sure that we get to grow as a part of that. The building is more accommodating to guests, and so we'll talk more about that. Um, so part-time staff, which we'll talk about in a little bit as well. And we also are saving for a potential building at some point. Um, right now we're here, and we're thankful for it, and we're making this space what it's supposed to be, but we also are mindful of future goals. And so with that being said, um, I think we will also post some more stuff on the website, on links to the Scott, I hope to be able to post a 2022 profit and loss, a budget versus actuals, and, and um, just a couple other odds and ends. So look for that stuff. If you have any questions, you're always wel welcome to talk to me or anyone on the finance team about stuff. But I hope that's helpful just for a high overview of things. And That's great. Yeah, well, as we're talking about stuff, um, there is, there'll be a, like a companion page on the website. It already exists. It probably reflects stuff from the last family meeting as I'm saying these words right now. Um, but there'll be like myvillagechurch.com slash family meeting. You'll be able to go there and look at, you know, yeah, Matt's, you know, lovely uh, financial <laughs> reports and anything yeah. else that we happen to refer to, Google Docs, yeah. uh, reports, whatever. Um, we'll have that there so you can get into the weeds if that's a thing that you really desire. And we'll make sure that we post on Realm uh, when that stuff is there too. So cool. cool. 
Thanks for all the money no stuff. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about some of some of the fun things uh, as it relates to, hey, because we do have some resources? Yeah. So Kia Kirby is someone that's been around the village for a minute, uh, for quite a while, and she does a lot of stuff. And you, if you're part of the village, you, you've probably been in conversation with someone, other leaders or whatever, and someone says, oh, yeah, Kia's da 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 And then, like, you'll be at another conversation with someone else, and somebody says, oh, yeah, I think Kia's actually helping to do that. And so we're aware of that, and that's happened for a, quite a while. And um, and so we're going to be bringing Kia on and some part-time staff, I would say very part-time, similar to what Katie Debig has been doing in Kville. And so her kind of serving description is uh, admin, Events and special projects, <laughs> which is what she does already. It's vague enough to <laughs> yeah. get all the things that she does. And we have lots of you know details sorting those things out and try to serve you know ourselves and you know certainly her and and whatever by bringing clarity what that actually means because we know that we could just there's a lot of things that we can either just get dumped on or take stuff in that's not within our scope or whatever. And so we reflect on those things, but we're really excited about it. that. Will start. March 1st, um, we'll have an all-staff lunch on the, the last day in February with myself, Matt, Scott, Katie, and Kia, which is really exciting. Um, and so just kind of a hit on philosophy of staff. The three of us have been around since before day one or literally day one in Scott's case. Um, and I, I do believe that while our philosophy of staff is not like a template for how churches must do things, having three pastoral staff has been really critical. Um, I wasn't on staff for the first three years, um, or, or I had another job, and so when I was able to be on staff, it obviously freed up the church to be healthier, me and my family to be healthier. It's been true for Scott, been true for Matt as well. But as we looked ahead, even in the early days of the church, I think we knew that if we had uh, the core of us three, then we could add subsequent um, part-time staff to, um, to help do a lot of things. And so we're really excited about what Kia will continue to do. And a lot of it is just, again, affirming what she's already been doing. Um, Kia essentially leads a, a, a staff meeting once a month already, and she has for a little while. <laughs> And so it's pretty exciting. We're really excited to get her in here and to figure stuff out together. So Yeah, super pumped. Yep. Love it. Totally. Can't wait. Matt, you want to talk a little bit about um, generosity stuff? You mentioned that there was a surplus and we did some fun stuff with that. What's yeah? Absolutely, yeah. We can all chime in on stuff. But man, the big idea from some of this extra generosity was we know that you all are generous. We know this is God's money and this is his church. And so it'd be easy to just not be intentional with something and save or whatever and that's not our desire at all um, we certainly want to be balanced with everything but so when we were talking at an elders meeting about man what can we do with this i think what well, how cool would it be just to be able to give away ten thousand dollars to um multiple different things and we guys can fill in stuff but some of that's um, extended overseas global go stuff some of that's in the city stuff some of that's in church needs that we know of, and some of that's even just pastors in the area um, want to be um, a blessing to and so man like we are pulling some of this from church planning some of this from just regular funds but our desire is to give back to be able to invest back on what from what god has given us into real lives and real ministries and opportunities i don't know if you guys want to share any of that stuff but we're excited about that we we're trying to also lead by example as we talk about generosity in the lives of our church we don't want to hoard ourselves as leadership and so our desire is to to be able to be an example and to be able to do what we're asking everyone to do you know so yeah. we're excited about that it's good michael you want to talk about yeah uh well one i just kind of posture where you're super like thankful really really thankful for the faithfulness of god's church Absolutely. and you know we we try to talk about money in consistent ways but not in um ways that are are um Oh my gosh, we're out of money. We need more money. But, you know, try to like over the long haul, like speak to those things as they show up in scripture and, and encourage people to be faithful. And so it's just been really sweet to see that happen. And I would say um, in light of generosity, it's been really refining even as elders to, to talk about what that looks like. And, you know, like a, a young family starting, sometimes money is tough. And then at some point, maybe jobs or provision or whatever, you, you have a little bit more money. 
and that can like open itself to things, some good and some bad. And that's true with the church as well. This is, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Matt. We probably not not felt this much financial freedom. Yeah. It, no, I mean, is that freedom. Ever? Oh, yeah, this is this has been a blessing. We we've yeah. not lived in this for ever. <clears throat> and so we're not assuming that it lasts forever. And yeah. hey, maybe we had a little surplus, and that's good. And so we're also not thinking, all right, like you know, we're going to spend thirty thirty thousand dollars on a light rack, and like, we're, you know, <laughs> like let's. You know. I mean, honestly, that's like you know, there's you get to see who people really are like when things are tight and yeah. they're hard or whatever and you also get to see who people really are yeah. when you know like there's an abundance of whatever and um yeah kudos even just to the finance team i mean you know talking about generosity and like that being something that we wanted to do like that's not that wasn't something we're not like these weirdly spiritual three people and there's a finance team who wanted to like you know invest in blah, blah, blah. like yeah. no like it was the finance team was like hey let's like, what if we did something different, mm-hmm. like, with this? What if we use this to bless or be generous in some way Absolutely. or whatever? And so, like, it's just really cool. Yeah. It's not just us, not just the finance, but, it, like, to have a collaborative thing, like, with many, many people who wanted to do something generous with that money. Just pretty Absolutely. sweet. I love that that's, like, the culture of the people here. So. Yeah, and so to be clear, around that kind of theme, it's, it's like, we still pinch pennies and mm-hmm. count nickels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and we... Ha- what I've observed is we have to, you have to fight to do that when you wouldn't have to. Like, we could buy a thing for X amount of dollars and whatever. Like, and it would be nice to have whatever. Um, and then Matt's always just being like, no, no, I'm just kidding. That's not true. <laughs> Matt's super generous and, and kind. So it's just been sweet to see, like, that um, refining of, like, no, we, we could swerve and be something that we haven't been, but we're not. And we're still, we still care about single dollars and cents in a way that, that we're accountable for, yeah. which has just been really sweet. Uh, just one of the blessings, uh, actually, there's a guy named Blessings in Zambia I spoke of in uh, what a, a sermon. Segue. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was unintentional. Um, a sermon a couple months back, and um, long story, we connected with him through some Acts 29, whatever, connected to a church in Kansas City, um, a, a pastor there, and we were able to, you know, of that $10,000, give half of what it would take to to build a well, the first well in this community in Zambia. And they started doing that at the beginning mm-hmm. of the year. And it's now, like, saw pictures and videos this week. It's functioning for the church, for the community, a real game changer. Yeah. And, like, just something simple like that that is, uh, for us, comes from surplus. But for them, it's, like, a real, you know, significant part That's of cool. life. And so, yeah. and blessings if you're listening. Bro, we're super thankful for you. So. For real. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. Uh, anything else around generosity or anything Uh Money wise, no, just some of the other organizations that we care about, and we'll talk about later, even local ghost stuff. But we're able to give some to Young Lives, Pathway to Hope, Serve City, many other things. But we're excited for that. We want to get invest back into Hamilton, and those are great organizations that our yeah. church partners with in many different ways. And so it's, it's exciting, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and again, just thanks to everybody who, who has been generous Absolutely. with us and to the Lord for ministry. And you know, we all get to do this stuff together. So thanks for. Thanks for doing that. Matt, do you want to hit on another kind of pocket of stuff with, hey, money, but also time and energy and effort and stuff with like our gathering space? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're looking forward to investing some of that money back into this space. Um, We have, over the years, been doing little projects and the maintenance team's been amazing at pinching in pennies, like Michael said, to do as much as we can on kind of very little. we are talking about investing some bigger dollars into the space. The women's bathroom has been pretty rough, and that's putting it nicely for a long time. And so we didn't know though, because we never go. In. <laughs> <laughs> we just didn't know. So <laughs> if they would have said something, <laughs> but yeah, we're looking forward to um, investing dollars into that space, um, making it actually work, and increasing the functionality of it, but also the look as well. Um, and so that's one of the things we're also excited about. Um, maybe the huddle room, getting a, a facelift, making that more um, functional for some of the part-time staff with mm-hmm. Kia and Katie and just meetings in general and how that can look. Um, also in mind is maybe adjusting the hospitality bar, merging it with the kitchen and putting it to one side of our space and just making that a little more effective, using some parts of our building in better ways that may be like our dead spots that we haven't used as efficiently. And then when we get to do that, then we get to look at maybe increasing our gathering space size to accommodate more chairs and just make the seating a little better. So I don't know if you guys want to add to that at all, but we are excited. This will not all happen at once, but the the women's bathroom is first, and that is planned. The next two to three weeks, we'll start working on that. And then from there on, we will 
be working on some of those other projects and hopefully by the end of this year maybe have all those done and as one last thing before I just turn it over to you if you have anything else this is all done from savings which is cool none of this is just going deep into debt none of this is just a whim this is all planned out hopefully by God's grace to serve the church well yeah and did you mention least stuff? Did we talk? Oh about no, that? I didn't mention so least stuff. But no, one last fine. thing is, and where this is coming from, thanks God, is that we did sign a five-year lease with Primary Health. We have a good relationship. Two of the first two years are locked in to where we don't have to do anything. It's a done deal. We're here for the next two years for 2023 and all of 2024, and then the next three years are year to year. Where if something, you know, we found a space whatever. We don't know what to do, but um, we can get out of this lease then and then move to those things. We can also stay here if our relationship with them is good and if this fits our needs. And yeah. so five-year lease, two years are locked in. And that's why we're looking now and in investing some money into the space because we will be here for the next two years. Yeah. We have a third, fourth, and fifth-year options. We'll be potential to be free agents on Absolutely. the market looking. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Yeah. I just want to say, yeah, I think the building project stuff comes from, yeah, we, we don't spend significant money. We haven't, we, whatever. But this is something where we're like, yeah, let's take a little bit of money. And I think it's twofold. One, to serve those that are existing, currently part of the village, members that serve and yeah, women in the atrocity that we would call their restroom, which we're just excited to make that look and function as it should have for a long, long time. And then the other stuff, uh, yeah, huddle room will take some kind of office makeover to help give a, a better space for Kia and Katie to office out of when they're here yep. through the week and, and serve us otherwise. Um, but then the other thing, like you said, Matt, is to welcome those that are not yet a part of the village. And if you stand in the back of our gathering space on a Sunday morning, we know that it's not technically full. Like there are seats available and there are spaces for people to sit, but you would think that it was when everyone's standing up singing or whatever, you look around and the, the excitement of it is like, hey, this place is full, and that's really great. Um, but the downside is, like, that's not always so hospitable. And and plus, I've been in preaching looking to my right for a significant period of time. I'm really looking forward to looking to my left. I'm really looking forward to that. And so, yeah, as Matt said, um, essentially planning on blowing out the kitchen and putting seats where that is. And, and if we can get 35 or 40 more chairs in there, that would be really great um, for you and your neighbor and those that are not yet a part of yeah. this church. So. Yeah. And then running plumbing, which is right now, anyone who does hospitality, they wheel a cart or trek, you know, with like, you know, jugs on their head, <laughs> water, like back and forth through the kitchen and the, you know, in the bar or whatever, because there's no running water where we actually make coffee and yeah. serve hot water and stuff. And so the idea is, ah, get rid of the kitchen, and then actually run some plumbing to that bar. So man, it's just, it works better for the folks that are there. It is more hospitable. Um, and I think it'll just functionally just make the space, you know, work as it should. And all that stuff, I mean, is the, like the reason we're pulling the trigger. Yeah, we, we have some resources to do that. Uh, and there's a, we finally like, like some connections with some building maintenance people who aren't even, aren't, aren't even part of the village, but who like for primary health, like that's their thing is to take care of the building. Some connections there that are like helping move some things forward as well. But also uh, there's, you know, just hearing from you guys in terms of what, what you want from a gathering space. We asked that for our membership renewal uh, stuff this past fall, and we did record uh, a podcast not too long ago, just kind of like going through the results of that survey in terms of what you guys thought about a lot of things, but one of those things was gathering space. What was important to you guys? What wasn't important? And so just encourage you to, to go back and listen to that. If you've not listened to that yet, that is available, and I'll make sure there's a link to that podcast in the show notes for this thing as well. Um, yeah, but it was like, yeah, all that stuff. We, we looked, you know, intentionally last year for a new building and hearing from you guys and everything else and say, okay, gives us the confidence now to like, okay, we're here for a couple more years. We have the resources. This space is really working. It's not like people are wanting to flee, you know, the basement or whatever yet. Uh, (laughs) and so, Hey, like let's make the most of this thing. And so we're really excited about that. I think it'll be, it'll be a really cool thing to see this space used even more, uh, to its fuller potential, you know? I think, Matt, you have another thing on here. Uh, just talking about uh, safety stuff. Absolutely. That's been like a huge effort in the last year. And so do you want to chat about where we are with that, what that looks like, Yeah, what's going on? Thanks. Um, so I'm thankful for the safety team that is is developed and is also developing um, as of December of this last year. There was work before that, but as of December, we officially have a functioning safety team made up of 10 men and women 
who serve on there on any given Sunday. We have four members of that team that are on, that are scheduled to kind of be aware of stuff, that have a walkie-talkie and an earpiece, that there is some communication going on. We need to firm up some things with positions and how that looks, but that is happening right now, and we're really thankful for that, and that has served us well. Even last Sunday, a couple little things, and, and our team took care of that, and I didn't even know about it until this last week, and so we're thankful for them. Um, we are also collaborating with the Hamilton Police Department. They have a program that pays uh, policemen and also women to help us for free to kind of get us up to thinking correctly about things and how to put systems in place and how to use technology and how to make sure all that we do is also in alignment with laws and the police department and stuff like that. And so we've met with a officer named Brian Buchanan, and he has met with the staff here to kind of just pitch how this could look, and we're thankful for him doing that. Brian has also met then with our safety team to talk to them about how things could look with trainings and opportunities and how to think about stuff and why this is important. And then Officer Brian and Officer Katie were in our gathering a couple weeks ago just to um, assess and, and see rhythms, flow, people, assess risk, um, also how we're doing as a safety team. And that was really helpful and they gave us some helpful feedback with that. And overall things are in a good trajectory um, from their own words. And so we have trainings to do. Um, we have you know, a lot to put in place still, but we are getting there with this. We're thankful for this team. And the main areas of emphasis are like us being prepared for just an accident if someone busts their face on the ground. Like, do we have uh, maybe a, a medical team in place that would know what to do, that we have first aid kits around? If there was like a natural disaster where power goes out or something happens, hey, do we have the functioning light kits and, you know, exit signs and all of that? And also, God forbid, in case there's a person that might want to do harm to our folks, do we have the the training, the knowledge, understanding, the communication to be able to handle something like that? And so those are the things that we're working towards. Our hope is not in this team. Our hope is obviously in God who protects, but we also get to use wisdom and put some stuff in place for any of these events that might come up. And so thankful for the Hamilton Police Department, thankful for this team, and we will have more to come on that in the future. That's sweet. Uh, I think Brandy um, just finished up background checks oh, yeah. for, mm -hmm. yep. you know, KBO volunteers and stuff like that too. And so there's just all sorts of layers and Matt's done a ton to like push some of that stuff forward and lots of other folks as well. But it's just really cool. Like it's a way for us to be, it is a way for us to be hospitable um, to the people yep. who are already here as well as to folks who might be looking for a church home. Uh, part of part of hospitality is making sure that folks are safe yep. and we know that we have things to learn and things to grow in. And so it's just really sweet. Hamilton Police Department and all the other folks that have collaborated to do this. Pretty cool. Yep. So I love when businesses or companies say like safety is our biggest concern, but like, but it's, it's not because they have other concerns. <laughs> um, and so we're not saying, but that. how much does it cost? <laughs> you know, yeah. so long. Yeah. And so we're, we're uh, somebody had kind of brought up the not objection, but like concern that like, oh man, as we do this, then like, will it be just, you know, like, will the, the vibe of showing up be like, oh gosh, like safety is just at the top. And it's like, well, no, it, you know, probably not people walking around with black suits and <laughs> bow ties. And it's, it's not like that, but we do want to increase the overall awareness of everyone. I think that's what um, Buchanan yep. is his name, yeah. has been doing. And, and so it should be in some ways subtle um, and increased awareness and mindfulness, but not like, okay, we can't be kind yeah. uh, any longer because that's not safe. And so we, we keep those things like, I think in, in balance and healthy Absolutely. In healthy ways, what we're trying to do. So, 100%. Yeah, good stuff. Michael, you want to talk about Acts 29 stuff a bit? Uh, do, well, do I have to or? <laughs> <laughs> Will you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, yeah, I'll start off by just saying uh, we are not unaware uh, of, you know, the podcast that came out, what, two years ago, Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. A lot of that had some <laughs> indicting stuff around Driscoll and tied into that is Acts 29 and whatever and other stuff beyond that. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're not unaware of those things. In fact, I, I would venture to say um, as elders collectively, we are, we try to be, strive to be as aware as, as anyone about all of the junk that goes on within any major <clears throat> denomination or movement or certainly network that we're a part of, like we want to be a part of that. Uh, we want to, to want, want to be aware of that. So um, it's fine if you shoot me a 
tweet screenshot of something that someone said about something that we're affiliated. Like I, just say, I just say my name. I, I would, <laughs> yeah. I would hope that I would I, that we would already be aware of that. And so yeah. So the the posture is from a place of like man. Whew, some of that stuff's tough, and you know history of whatever within the network or those that were once a part of the network. And so yeah, none of that is whatever. Which kind of led to every year we kind of have to recommit as an as a as a church to continue to be a part of an X twenty nine to continue to be a part of X twenty nine. Just like we have member renewal, we have X twenty nine renewal. Mm. And just like with member renewal here at the village, we say, hey, it's an opportunity for you to like dip out like there's off ramp like we mm-hmm. want to create uh, consistent off ramps for you to like hey we're, we're no longer a good good fit and so as we kind of reflect annually in the past it's been a little less intense this year we kind of sat down it was a, essentially a, an entire elders meeting about like ah, the benefits of x29 and and you know costs uh, pros versus cons and all those things and so i would just uh, so that kind of forced me to write a document saying, yeah, why are we continuing to be a part of Acts 29? So I'll just share some high points of that with you. Uh, I'm guessing that would be public in this yeah, somewhere absolutely. or whatever. For sure. And then in the reality is we get to continue to take in information and interact with stuff. And, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, yeah. And so uh, alignment is probably the biggest thing. Um, that doesn't mean that we agree with every single church that... It's not like that, but but like at the highest level, the assessment process creates alignment that, in my experience, is invaluable. In particular, with global partnerships, which I'll talk about in just a couple minutes. But um, and and there is just a, a level of alignment when you interact with an X twenty nine church that you, uh, by God's grace, you know what you're getting. You know what the gospel means. You know what uh, kind of church structure models are going to be there. You know what foundational fabric uh, of theology. I know um, Brittany and Emmy went to Scotland, uh, I think last summer, and they went to an X-29 church in Scotland, and they said, you know, the accents were different, but by and large, it just felt very... So there's a lot of diversity within the network as well. I also said in that elders meeting, I can't believe that the network still exists, (laughs) uh, because I can't believe that anything still exists uh, around the last three years of division and around race stuff and all, all the stuff that's happening and justice stuff and, and politicizing and all that stuff. And yet it does. And so some people have, again, dipped out and no longer part of the network. And, and some are still kind of figuring out what that looks like. And so I'd say alignment in the assessment process, huge uh, relationships and, and resources. We've been a part of the network since 2010. And so in some, uh, in some kind of way, shape, or form and historically and even currently that benefits me more than even these guys more than the church and although we're trying to like make some shifts there on a local level to to incorporate uh, elders beyond just the lead pastor and and even leaders beyond the elders that has benefited me um, Kim contributes to serve the wives and kind of a formal role within the network but Kim and I have benefited greatly by the relationships and resources of the network for, man, going on 13 years. Um, I mentioned Global Partners, uh, a really big deal. Um, in fact, the the Global Partners that we have right now in Guatemala, um, they are benefiting directly from X29 in ways that we probably don't. Uh, starting a Church in Hard Places cohort, developing six guys to plant churches in rural Guatemala, and they're doing that. Uh, I mean, I had a conversation a couple weeks ago, um, and Mitch, uh, one of our, our guys in Guatemala, he's talking about raising money through X29 to get like audio books of like valuable resources on like some type of, I mean, they have phones by and large, but um, because there are some guys that are wanting to plant churches that they don't even, they can't even read. And so what does that even look like? Trying to get audio resources to them. And so that's really sweet to see uh, yeah, the network in some really sweet ways uh, show up tangibly through global partnerships. And then the other thing is just the priority of church planting. Um, being a part of a church planting network makes us prioritize not only our funds, which we could do outside of the network, but just to be aware of as I get to interact with 
um, assessment conferences and whatever to just be around the culture of church planting and pushing that forward makes us not grow stale in movements and trends and all those things. So a lot more in there. Uh, you guys can interact with that however you want. But. Well, I agree with all that. It's exciting. Um, Scott and I get to benefit <clears throat> some through the relationships as well and, and opportunities that they have, but we're thankful for X-29. Definitely always assessing it, but yeah, you know, just affirm all that you said. Yeah. Do um, you want to, I mean, maybe some assumption, even in the way we're talking, do you want to like share a little bit about what Acts 29 is in case sure. folks are who are listening sure. you're like, oh, that all's wonderful. What are you talking about? You yeah. Know, like, so, you know, you've probably heard of um, denominations. You have Baptist, Presbyterian, or whatever. Acts 29 is nothing like that. Um, Acts 29 is a, I would say, a looser affiliation. It's a network. And so you look at um, churches linking arms in kind of horizontal ways rather than like a hierarchical vertical ways, although X-29 has a president and a board and all those things, um, regional directors and, and all those things. And so it's a network of church planting churches committed to planting healthy churches. Um, and that, you know, it's it's been said from, uh, you know, Chandler and, and many others, uh, Matt Chandler's uh, high executive within the network, but it's a single issue network committed to, to planting churches. And so there are other things that might be less clear. There's, there's room for variance around how that shows up. Um, and there is a commitment to clarity, theological clarity, and, and some other things. And so there are some distinctives that kind of set the network apart. But essentially, it is a network of, I think, uh, over 700 churches worldwide um, centered in the U.S., but have since kind of gone global in some really sweet ways. Um, committed to planting healthy churches. Yeah, it's good. And I think one of the sweet things, which also is one of the, it's a challenge as well, is because there's so much diversity. And then like it, it is an interdenominational network. So mm-hmm. churches in other denominations or not in any denomination at all can be a part of the network. And that's a really cool thing because there's something that brings us together that's that's not bound by bylaws and other stuff. It's Jesus, mission, some common theology, and wanting to plant churches, um, which is really cool. And that also means like that there's lots of diversity in in thought or maybe approach or application contextually to certain theological or you know cultural issues or whatever. And so, hey, there's this X29 church over here and this X29 church over here, and they might approach things differently. Mm-hmm. And so we know today, uh, man, it's been evident in the last five or six years, especially where it's like. There's this big thing happening, and so and so church on the other side of the country, they're saying this and they're doing this. What do you think about that? And it's like, I don't know. That's them and their spot and their thing. And so, like, yeah, we can talk about it, but but that that person doesn't have anything to do or bear any weight here at this place. And so, there's some like really sweet. There's there's like sweetness to diversity being brought united in Jesus. And also, there's some stuff that we have to like just actively remember that hey. Yes, Acts 29 matters, and we do evaluate that relationship on a regular basis. But also, like, if you have questions about stuff, like what other churches do, what other pastors are saying, what like that, but that's not us. Like, they don't have any weight here, and so we you get to talk to us about how stuff might be bearing fruit or not here at the village, and that's what we care about. Like, we get to be your pastors, and and you get to be our sheep, and we get to figure out what it looks like to contextualize gospel truths here in this community in our context. And so, yeah, that's tricky. Like it, there's a sweet thing and there's a tricky thing to it too, especially in a culture that like just wants us to react to everything and loves guilt by association and, and also favor by association as well. When, man, we just want to do our thing here in Hamilton mm-hmm. <laughs> and like, and you know, move along day by day with Jesus. And so, yeah. I will say one of the longevity pieces is early on the, the network benefited us. I mean, we just didn't know what we were doing. And so we had relationships and again, it's not the network like at large. It's it's real relationships. You know, uh, some of my best friends are X29 church pastors, and um, and so early on we benefited greatly. And it's been really kind of sweet. Not that we have things all the things figured out, but when you have a, a new church planter, uh, I, I was a part of an assessment last year. Kim and I were, and so I even meet monthly with a guy who's planting in Minnesota and. Whatever and so like it's really sweet to have some level of, not that we have wisdom or have it figured out, but longevity mm-hmm. to where we can now give back and and we have an outlet to do that in. This is kind of nice. I mean, yeah. I think that's that was a thing that I think I was 
were proofed on a bit was like, ah, what are we getting out of this relationship? And like we have gotten and we continue to get something out of that relationship with Axe 29, but it's also, it is what we're, it's what we're giving as well. Like we're in a position now where we are more cultivating and I think being able to pour in and invest and shepherd and help grow up in the, the network, whether that's Guatemala stuff or people locally. And so, yeah, that's kind of like the stage that we're at where, you know, we're a teenager. And so we get to bear some weight yeah. in the network and do some things and not just sit around and, you know, <laughs> hey, well, what do you, what have you done for me lately? You know, that kind of thing, which is good. Yeah, and one just additional thing that this shifted even in the last year. So we give, ah, this is helpful. So the requirement is to give 10% to church planting. And for us, we give some of that away. Matt said that some of that money that we were giving away was from church planting. So so we give ourselves some of that money <laughs> for savings so that when we you know plant churches in the future, which we desire to do, um, we give that away, whatever, locally, uh, globally. But um, one of the things that shifted, we give 1% to the network. That, that increased to 2%. And um, part of that shift was now when someone goes through assessment, which again, hopefully when we plant churches in the future, we have internal stuff, development, uh, assessment. But then when we get to the point to where we want to assess for them to go, we want them to plant an Acts 29 church. If they are essentially affirmed through that process, then then they get $25,000 um, from the network, which has never been a thing. It's always been church to church, and we got like 10 bucks we can give you or whatever. <laughs> and so that's that's a, a pretty big benefit yeah, and absolutely. a blessing. So That's really, it's really sweet. sweet. So we've hit on... Yeah, global stuff, local stuff, what it looks like. Um, Michael, do you want to chat a little bit about global go stuff, global missions, what that does look like for this year tangibly? Yeah, in short, uh, Global Go at the Village is an initiative that's committed to learning from and investing in uh, churches to the ends of the world. And and we... uh, primarily do that and, and we have some one-offs I mentioned Zambia and some other stuff but we do that through through I would say a, a very um, a close partnership with some local leaders in Guatemala um, Tammy Tucker Matt's wife she is the deacon of Global Go and she's um, the biggest gift to me because she like talks to airline companies for long periods of time <laughs> and like and so this search, is true. yeah, and Matt's like, oh gosh, I'm sick of hearing about longer than normal. Please. Yeah, and uh, I mean, CDC guidelines for tri- like all the things that those things seem really important. I'm really excited about getting on a plane and ending up in Guatemala. I'm less excited about figuring out. And Tammy is just a gift uh, on the logistical side. Um, and so Tammy and I, even last week or two weeks ago, we sat down with two of the leaders, Ginder and Mitch, in Guatemala, and we begin to plan our trip there and so we have six of us going in may may 20th through the 27th and i I think just what i would say is we legitimately we just bang the drum we meet uh, monthly with that team until we go that we are not going there to be anyone's savior we're not going there to like do global missions it's it's not like oh we paint the wall and next year we're going to paint it a different color and it's so (laughs) cool and and let's do it for the kids you know it's like we get to learn how the local church exists in, in a, a different context than ours, in a different language, and and come alongside them with resources that maybe we have that God's given us uh, uniquely. And and gosh, we learn from them, and we get to invest in them. And it's just been so sweet. They're my friends. Uh, I, I could hit Mitch or Ginder or Kaitana, who I can't even speak to in the same language, I could hit them up right now. They would answer the phone. We could have a chat, and uh, they're they're friends and they're a gift. And so, we're we're going down to figure out what it looks like to learn from them, to support them in some ways. And so, what it looks like when we go there is we'll spend time around the church. That's kind of the center of the community there in the village, and we'll hang out with some kids and we'll play soccer. And I'll get overheated and um, have to lay there for hours because I just literally can't move and. Um, last year we helped build a thing, you know, a little shelter add-on um, to the building, which was a, a gift that they've benefited from. Um, we'll do house visits where we just go and we we listen to the stories of locals. And, and just like in our context, it's quite different because you wouldn't just show up to someone's house and be like, hey, can the eight of us come in and have a chat? That's probably not normal in kind of American 
culture, but there it is. And so we'll, we'll just show up and say, hey, like, you haven't been around the church in a while. How can we pray for you? How can we care for you? And, and you know, they'll, they'll kind of tell their story, and we hear that through translators, and, and they'll say, and, uh, and this is my story. And then, like, does somebody want to share their story? And we'll fumble through telling our own story, and it will be sweet and nerve-wracking. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I just, just want to reiterate that it's just the local church being the local church in a different context and us kind of bridging some gaps through modern communication and transportation and some super sweet uh, aligned ways around that stuff. So. Matt, do you want to talk about some stuff, just local go stuff, local yeah. missions? Absolutely, yeah, thanks. <clears throat> um, much like Global Go is obviously overseas, Local Go is largely Hamilton area-based stuff. Um, where we anchor this from is, is a verse in First Thessalonians 2.8. It says this, So being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves because you would become very dear to us. And that's our heart. We don't do that perfectly, but that's our desire to certainly share God also to be available and around and to know that there's real needs and to do this, um, not because we feel like it's just the right thing to do, but because we actually love people and those around us. And um, so what is local mission? Um, how we would say it is local mission is the making, maturing, and multiplying disciples through regular evangelism, service, and presence in these neighborhoods. And over the last year or two, we've been developing a team. It's come together. We've done a lot. Um, we've identified opportunities and, and focuses and that's taken a little while because there's a thousand things that we could do and serve and you know invest in but we, we tried to say okay what is tangible and reasonable for this team and also our church and those five emphasis are um, Young Lives, Serve City, Pathway to Hope, um, Hamilton and like city events and then also very much important is evangelism in all of that. And so we are we just developed point people for each of those initiatives so it's not just me connecting with all those things but we have people on the team that are connecting with those things getting to know and build real relationships with those organizations and then be able to bring stuff opportunities information back to our team and also our church so that way we can invite our team into stuff and also our church into things as well and um lastly with that what a, a rhythm looks like in case you are interested in, in joining this or just learning more about it is um, largely in a quarter our desire is to have each one of those um, point people for those five emphasis bring an opportunity to our team. And we also have a huddle in that quarter as well. So we talk about stuff in the huddle. We, our desire is to pray, to, to learn, to be updated, and to plan on things. And then we desire to be invited into those opportunities as the point people bring stuff from those organizations. And so if you have other thoughts on it, I can post something um, with, with Scott's help on the website, or we can talk about it. We will have a huddle probably in March if you're interested in that. And so thanks for letting me yeah, share a little bit about some yeah, of those things. It's exciting stuff. Yeah. Love it. Um, one thing that's happening this year that is unique uh, is Pastor Michael gets to take a sabbatical, yes. uh, which is pretty sweet. And so, Wait, um, that hasn't started yet? <laughs> yeah, I have not worked in months. This is crazy. Uh, well, welcome, that was happening well, welcome now. back. Welcome back. <laughs> um, yeah, so Michael gets to take a sabbatical this summer. Uh, Matt and I, uh, our families got to enjoy one yep. last year, and yeah, it's Graham's turn now. And so, um, just real quick, want to hit on like why sabbaticals are a thing that we do. Um, we, I feel like whenever you hear about someone going on sabbatical, uh, kind of the assumption is, oh shoot, what's wrong with them? <laughs> uh, like they've that's a safe assumption. They failed morally, or there's like some uh, they're like burning out or flaming out or whatever. And okay, well we have to like send them away to recover because they're, you know, they're whatever. They're not healthy. And the reality is like we don't want to do that. Um, we don't want to have a culture of burnout here at the village. We we actively try to fight against that. You know, when we sit down with leaders, right, deacon stuff, assessment stuff, or whatever, like, we literally, do, do you want to continue serving this role and you break? You know, like, we, we want to we, we want to make off-ramps for folks to be able to rest if they need to rest. And that also goes for us as well um, as, you know, elders, especially those of us who are on staff full-time. Um, and here's why. Like, one, like, we are uniquely kind of enmeshed in stuff because of our role, um, our employment, uh, our gospel, church, community, friendships, family, like a lot of it's tied into like one thing. Um, so even when we have healthy boundaries, like it is just, it, it's sometimes hard to separate those things out at times. Um, we shoulder burdens that um, that aren't necessarily heavier than everyone else. And at the same time, there are 
there are just lots of things that we hear about and, and we bear with folks and uh, it is really, really good for us to sometimes be able to like step back and, Hey, what are our particular mm-hmm. burdens? Um, and to, to think about that as well. So it is a, it gets to be a time of relief, um, and reinforce that, man, Jesus is the hope for the church, not us, because that is a tangible thing over time. Ah, people coming to you for stuff and we get to point people to Jesus, but also there is this just really easy to sometimes fall in the trap of, ah, am I, I'm necessary. I'm needed, you know, mm-hmm. for, uh, for the hope of the church or whatever. And then, um, yeah, being in the word and prayer, like we are, we pray we're in the word as pastors and elders, and yet so much of our time in the word and prayer is also connected to, in some ways, like trying to grow and, mm-hmm. you know, help the rest of the church flourish in some way. And so our spiritual life is just entangled in the lives of other people's spiritual life. And so it's really good for us to be able to step back and say, okay, like read purely for us, not to produce a sermon, not because we're studying this thing with somebody, not because, but like just to read and pray in extended ways. Um, that are literally just to help us nourish our life in Jesus. And so um, it's helpful for the church because it helps remind the local church that like, hey, it is, this church is not built around a, a personality. And and that's one thing when Matt and I leave, like we know that there's gaps and we had to, you know, fill in those. And it's a lot of work to leave. Dude, we also know that like, Michael is the one, uh, and talking about you as if you're not here, Michael's the one that's like <laughs> speaking, speaking on a Sunday morning. He's preaching on a Sunday morning more than anyone else. And so... Um, that not that he, he doesn't have a cult of personality. Like people have a, a he is humble enough and people love him genuinely. Uh, and I don't think esteem him, you know, higher than the Lord or anything like that. And yet, and yet there is just, you get used to hearing a person or something being built a certain way. And it's really good to remember, oh gosh, like my faith is not, not contingent yeah. flowing through this one person, but it, it really just is me and Jesus um, with a local church, no matter who's part of that. So that's part of it. Um, also, uh, it's a way for us just to be healthy uh, as well, um, like for us to step away and be rejuvenated and come back healthy. That's good for the church so we can lead from a place of health. And then also, like us stepping away does allow other people to fill in gaps, you know? And so like when we're gone, it is a bit of a, that's part of the hard work for us to get ready for sabbatical is like, okay, we're leaving. Uh, who's going to do this stuff? Is this stuff worth doing? You know, and if it's not worth someone else doing, is it worth me doing? There's all sorts of things that come up in that. And so it does allow folks to step up and bear some weight in a unique way. And so, yeah, like that's, that's part of why we do sabbaticals, why we think they're good for us and why we think they're good for the church at large. And so, yeah, Graham gets to take one this summer. Uh, what are the dates that you're going to be gone? Essentially the f- First week, first Sunday in June, I think it's June 4th through like August 13th-ish or something like that. So yeah, so. 70 days. 70 days. Yeah, 11 weeks-ish. Just sitting on the beach. And I'm just <laughs> uh, that'll be good. Um, so uh, I know this this wasn't like a guarded secret. Also, I don't know that we've like declared stuff and dates or whatever from this day, but we've talked about it. Uh, Bailey Fowler submitted a question just about this. Like, what hey, is Bailey. the... Like, what is the summer going to look like? What's it going to look like with Michael on sabbatical? How will the other elders stay healthy? Uh, how will volunteers stay healthy? What's going to give? Like, was the last part of it, which I just love that. Uh, and that that's a real question because when there are less people around, I mean, to continue doing the same thing, you know, what is going to give or whatever. And so, yeah, thoughts yeah. from you two about that. Now, yeah. I don't care what's going to give. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm just out of here. Hey, you have to come back to it. And so just remember that. All I have to that's say is when the cat's away, the mice will play. <laughs> that's right. Me and Woo! Scott are going to kick back. I'm just joking. Now we're looking forward Mimosas to Mimosas for staying. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, that's one of the why, reasons, too, why we mentioned Kia earlier. She will be a, a really helpful part um, while Michael is gone to obviously help us and pick up pieces and carry on her own things. And she will obviously continue on after he gets back. But we're thankful for the timeliness of this hire. Yeah, um, I mean, Scott will be preaching more for sure. Um, I'll be helping out with there as well. Um, gosh, just a ton of stuff that we probably don't even know yet. But, like, Michael will be working through some of those things. And that's one of the opportunities in the next month or two so identify those things at which hey we can put those things down and no one really has to pick up those things and other things are really important that someone needs to own like you said scott and so i think it will be good um we definitely want to do our best we've learned from some of the stuff last year when scott and i were gone um things mostly went well but yeah there's a couple little hiccups that we want to be aware of and we don't want to burn anyone else out that is serving alongside of us and so we definitely want to be mindful i think that's one of my biggest things it's just a mindfulness of the, the weight that people bear, all that's going on, that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I definitely have some 
sorting to do prior to which you know Hanauer Adam Hanauer and a uh, team of kind of sabbatical a uh, sabbatical team I know helped come alongside you all to help process a bit even with your families and so looking forward to some of that I, I am um, increasingly looking forward to just putting down productivity for an extended period of time like the the tough thing about what we get to do is I think we love our jobs Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's not a matter of like I don't ever have to try to get Matt or Scott or myself to work it's the other side of it is like you probably need to get us to not work so much and um, and I joked around with someone this is just I, I think in honesty I joked around with someone last week maybe like the reason why I am drawn to work I think um you know, in the evenings or like just poking around a sermon all the time is because like I'm not going to show up for something unprepared. And that might not be great, but like at least I'll have put the work in. And so like I I live out of like a necessity for like a buffer. And like this week was the first week that I approached a sermon f- nearly freshly like on Monday, which I hate. Mm. Uh, and Monday was wonky in and of itself. And so I was like, ugh. And so, like, it's like, oh, I don't have, like, the buffer that I need. I need more. And so, like, oh, so I work ahead as much as I can. Um, people think I'm organized. I'm not. I'm just, um, I'm not. Uh, I do those things as, like, self-preservation. So just being mindful of those things. And then I, I think Kelly talked to Kim, like, oh, like, what, you know, what's it going to be like with uh, Kelly? That's Scott's wife. What, what will it be like to have Michael around for months? And Kim's like, I don't know. <laughs> I can't wait. Okay. <laughs> But um, but I think some of the things that's like always in me, it's like, okay, I have to, I have to like do, I have to, whatever. It's like, okay, well, when I don't have to do, I don't know, I'm not sure what that looks like. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'll be I'm, I'm looking forward to I'm, this. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> You're going to be journaling said maybe? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, have, I, I don't know what the time will look like, but I'm really, I'm at this point, <clears throat> I'm like just so excited to like, like to just to put down productivity. I'm, I'm so thankful um, I know that not everybody gets to take 10 weeks and not do their job. Um, and so I, in just a very practical way, just so thankful and looking forward to it. And, you know, our family hopefully can get away for a bit and between soccer and basketball and softball and all the other things, hopefully we can just have some sweet time, um, you know, maybe vacation a little bit or whatever. So Yeah, that's always good. My hope is that the summer, you know, one lot goes away, doesn't look wildly, vastly different. You know, like we'll still have, and we'll talk about calendar stuff in a minute. Yeah, still have Village Picnic, still continue through John. I think we will finish that out July 9th and we'll go through uh, Colossians. That'll be the next series that we're in. And so we'll start that and be a little bit over halfway through, I think, when, when Graham comes back. And so that's kind of what the summer will look like. And I, the summer is always a little, ah, people are gone and people aren't and new people around. And, you know, hopefully it's life giving and fun. There'll be a, Bible study and all that kind of stuff going on as well. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, yeah, and so my my hope is like it doesn't feel wildly different. And yet there will be a gap because he's not here. Um, and so eh, one of the things that gets to give is, I mean, for me personally, I had like nine meetings, like from Monday to today. I have like nine meetings, on my, which is a, a little higher than usual anyways. But like I just can't do that if like if I'm doing the lion's share preaching well, he's away, and so that's one of the things that we'll have to give is my. I'm going to have to be disciplined with my calendar and just make space and know, hey, for the next 11 weeks, by and large, like I'm going to have to just give a lot more space to, you know, to just being in the Word and writing a sermon and all those things. And so, all that to say, like, uh, yeah, I won't be less available, and yet I may, if it's not as urgent or what, I just may have to like clean my calendar a bit. But man, like we want those who are around this summer who are also bearing weight, maybe bearing more weight or the same weight or whatever. We, we want you, you know, Matt, myself, Adam, come and chat with us. Like if there are, if there are things that are missed or balls that are being dropped or gaps that are there, burden that's unfair or whatever, like we, we want to hear about that. Like we, we want things to continue in a healthy way and we want you to be healthy. And so if there are things that we're, we're missing, which is honestly really easy to do, especially the first time like we, we were all taking sabbaticals or whatever. Um, we want to hear about it. We know that there's going to be stuff that we miss. And so we want to learn and grow from that too. And we don't want anyone to like suffer in silence because anyone's like bearing, you know, too much stuff uh, for 11 weeks. We don't want our sabbaticals to burn out anybody else. And so 
talk about that stuff, bring those yeah. things to us, and uh, we'll be around or whatever. And so, yeah. Any other thoughts? Yeah. I'll say my role, you know, when you plant a church, we say all the time, like, you have to be a generalist. And so in the beginning, you're, you know, doing everything. Um, and, and that was true, even in, yeah, as I was teaching and all the things, not doing everything, not doing anything well, but doing everything. As we've multiplied staff and as we have longevity among the elders, um, like, I... I I'll take this opportunity to say it is literally a privilege to get to work beside these guys um, and Katie and Kia and, you know, a smaller capacity um, to serve alongside these men as co-laborers, as, ah, these are my co-workers, um, as elders alongside Hanauer. We do a lot of stuff. Um, Somebody asked me the other day, like, what do I do? And I, I, like, don't even know what I do. But, like, man, I was talking to Matt yesterday. Like, not sure what we do, but, gosh, it, there's never enough of it. When I lay down at night, there's always more to do. And But we do a lot of stuff. These guys just do stuff. We have a, the longevity that we have together has allowed for, man, we just, we, we might not even say something. And I know that Scott's going to take care of that thing or Matt's going to take care of the thing or I just noticed something, hey, this is done, and oh, who did that? Like, it just, so when we meet together weekly, it's not me dictating orders. All right, guys, here's the game plan for this week. Like, we know the game plan, and we, the beauty of longevity together is we know how we fit uniquely in that. And in that, you know, 13-year journey of becoming the Village Church and figuring out who we are, like, my role today is, yeah, I get to preach, and I do get to meet with people outside of the Village and other Pastors, church planters, people, whatever. Um, so that's uh, some of that. Um, also, like my my work is not so significant day to day as it is over the long run. I think I told Kim like like this church can go without me for three months, six months. I don't know. Like, and they wouldn't even know that I was gone day to day because of Matt and Scott and so many others work that they do. Probably, if I was going for six years um, or three years, like it would be like, hey, where's that one guy at? But I think that's the beauty of our gift mix, and I do get to like hang out in alignment at the higher levels that that probably over time build culture. Mm-hmm. But day to day, man, like we just have so many people that do so much. Um, and so yeah, Scott will be preaching. One downside to this is I'm going to Guatemala the two weeks prior to sabbatical, so that's like ah. Two more preachings that I won't have in there, but Scott's preaching eight times, Matt's preaching twice, um, and then we'll fill that in with other elders, and um, and hopefully, yeah, that burden won't be overwhelming. But it's also yeah. we're looking ahead at that, and I I can see you know sweat on Scott's face when we talk about <laughs> it, um, because I mean preaching once is really hard, like really really hard. Preaching twice is hard. Carrying the burden of preaching for months is like. It just is really hard. And so I want to serve Scott and Matt and the others even however I can right now. So, yeah. yeah. And I'm not dreading it. I mean, it's I know it's going to be a different summer, but, like, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited that you get to take a break. I'm excited. It feels like a bit of a challenge. Oh, I get to yeah. let myself grow in this particular way or whatever. And Matt and I will still That's chat cool. on Monday mornings, bring our mimosas <laughs> Bloody, or, or Bloody Marys. It's my whatever. breakfast drink of choice. Uh, it's disgusting. How can but, uh, no, it's delicious. Yeah. Oh, it's the peppery, the better. Um, uh, so yeah, Matt and I still have our staff meetings. We'll still try to get together for elders meetings yeah. once a month. I mean, you know, still, you know, try to get the family out on vacation for a week. You know what I mean? Like we will still do things and you know, have a village picnic. And so like that, there'll be, yeah, much to celebrate and enjoy and life will hopefully be pretty normal. Yeah. Um, in a way that honestly, like that is a gift. Like the mm-hmm. fact that we're not like Oh shoot! How will we survive for eleven weeks? Yeah. You know, like that's a that's honestly a gift to you know Graham's leadership and also just in general the culture of our church, Absolutely. who does bear a ton of weight yeah. across the board and lots of things. And so yeah, yeah, super pumped for all that stuff. Did want to um, just go over really briefly like some calendar stuff here. Um, what the rest of the year, I mean, into the fall, I guess will look like in some ways. Just some things to hit on. Uh, so in March, we'll obviously have the family meeting, um, March nineteenth. Uh, there is a fun thing. So like our village arts group, um, that meets monthly, uh, I'm not going to spill the beans on what it is or whatever, but yeah, we're trying to do something to celebrate being 
to and like some of the stuff that folks have made and all of that. And so we'll talk more about it down the road. But um, yeah, there's just some fun stuff happening there uh, in March, uh, in April. That'll be a rest month for us, so like no crazy classes or lots of meetings or whatever afterwards. Easter uh, is also in mm-hmm. April this year, and so we'll celebrate Easter together. May, um, we'll have uh, kind of our first kind of village basics sort of class um, about being under the word. And so we'll talk about the Bible and like what's, what is it? Uh, how can we trust it? How do we read it? Um, which will like springboard into like a summer Bible study. And so mm-hmm. I've I think I've narrowed down to a few books of what we might do together as a church and got to talk to these guys about that. Um, but we'll do a kind of a on your own in like a small group or whatever Bible study and recruit some folks who might want to lead those things or whatever. And so more about that down the road. Guatemala trip will happen in May as well, the 20th through the 27th. Uh, in June, Grahams are gone. Uh, that'll be a connect month as well. So our second connect month like we did here in February will happen also in June. So Village mm-hmm. Gate, baptism stuff, uh, New Year Huddle, all that will happen then. And the, the our village picnic, our annual summer picnic, will happen on June 11th. That's what's on the calendar yep. anyway. That might shift or whatever. But in June, we'll have a, a picnic, uh, which is fun. That's yeah. That always happens on a Sunday morning. Meet somewhere, eat some food, and celebrate, and just enjoy each other uh, as a church. July, we will start the Colossians uh, series. And you'll hear more about that as we get closer to that as well. August, Grams will be back. Um, yeah, and then September, uh, don't know what we might do preaching-wise. We talked about doing a maybe a series focused on like just different kinds of relationships that we have. Might be a, a topical um, little break or whatever for us. And we'll also do like kind of a missions class, our second uh, village basis class around being among neighbors as missionaries and what that looks like. So just kind of a snapshot. There'll probably be other things that fill in throughout there as well. But yeah, it's like a high high level view of what you know through the fall looks like. So absolutely. Uh, any final? Thoughts, words from you guys before we wrap up stuff here? We're thankful for you all that are listening. Um, like Scott said, there is an opportunity to process this on a later date, I think March 19th. Yep. Um, love to hear anything else that comes up. You can feel free to talk to us in between if you have stuff. But yeah, hope it's been helpful. Yep. I mean, what makes all this so exciting is just the culture of the many people that make up this church. And um, yeah, just such a gift mm-hmm. to be a part of this church community yeah Yeah. sweet thanks for listening to this guys um i will like i said have a page on the website with more resources hopefully this will be time stamped as well and so uh i guess if you're listening to this at the end not as helpful (laughs) if you already gotten here but trying to make this as easy as possible jot down questions you can shoot them to us in advance or bring them with you on the 19th yeah and we look forward to chatting with you all then so thanks and we'll see you next time